Okay, we're going to move to item 14, which is a gated community concept. Again, the presentation by Diana Langley, our interim city manager. So in 2013, um, residents living on Hastings Way and Morrison Bend in Yuba City, which is located at the northeast corner of Railroad Avenue and Bogue Road, approached staff about the concept of converting their subdivision to a gated uh, neighborhood. So the item was brought before council in February of 2013 for policy direction. And the council at that time said that, yes, they could proceed, provided that 100% of the property owners were in agreement and that all property owners agreed to pay, pay for the ongoing maintenance of the improvements internal to the neighborhood. And so what happened um, is that they went back to the neighbors and they had they couldn't get 100% approval for proceeding with uh, abandoning the right-of-way and, and creating a gated subdivision. At the time, items that were considered were community acceptance of the exclusivity of gated neighborhoods in general. Currently within Yuba City, there are three gated neighborhoods. They were um, submitted, when the applications were submitted for those subdivisions, they were submitted as private subdivisions, and so they were processed such, uh, those neighborhoods are Woodridge Court off of Lincoln Road, Cobblestone Court off of Blevin Road, and then um, Oak Hollow off of Clark Road. The other thing is the uniqueness of the neighborhood request and or the precedent set in supporting a gated community concept. Uh, so consideration should be given to points of access, other areas served by the streets, the ability to install gates and stack vehicles without impeding traffic on other streets, et cetera. The ability to provide access to emergency services, postal services, garbage collection, and other uh, delivery drivers. And so the gates would need to be equipped with the necessary devices to allow emergency vehicles to access the subdivision. And then also codes would need to be given to um, postal employees, garbage employees, et cetera, to be able to get into the gates. And then another consideration is the willingness of residents to accept all costs of conversion, all added maintenance costs of private street conversion, organizational mechanism to ensure monetary obligations and necessary work are being carried out, information of a homeowner's association with 100% approval of the property owners. In regard to legal considerations, streets and the California Streets and Highways Code does not allow you to put a gate on a public street. So in order to be able to install gates, we would need to restrict um, we would actually have to abandon the right of way so that they can restrict access. And so the property owners would have to preserve access rights through the dedication of cross access easements, and then also provide easements for any public utilities within the subdivision so that the utility providers continue, can continue to maintain them. So fast forward to July of 2020, two representatives of that same neighborhood came forward and approached staff again about converting the neighborhood to a gated community. And their request is as follows. Provide gated ingress egress off of Bogue Road and Railroad Avenue, and the city to continue to provide maintenance of all city owned internal infrastructure via maintenance agreement at no additional cost to the property owners. So, specific to this subdivision, again, you have Railroad Avenue, Bogue Road, you have the main entry here at Hastings Way, and then you have another entrance here at Railroad Avenue. At the Bogue Road entrance, you can see that you could install gates here and have stacking for vehicles. And on Railroad Avenue, if you installed the gates far enough back, you could allow for stacking of vehicles as they're waiting for the gates to open. So in terms of maintenance considerations, um, other gated communities within Yuba City pay for the maintenance of the internal infrastructure. So it's a, they're private streets. So they're responsible for the street maintenance, street lights, um, storm drain, um, sewer. We, we maintain the water lines in those subdivisions, but they are responsible for maintaining the sewer. Other considerations is should the cost for maintenance be borne by the property owners, the city, or transitioned over time from the city to the property owners? And I know that the city attorney has a comment related to um, cost for maintenance by the city once it becomes a private street. So Shannon, I don't know if you want to bring that up now. Funds 
Thank you. All right, thank you, Shannon. Uh, who owns and maintains the infrastructure? What is the maintenance schedule and estimated maintenance cost? If the requirement is that the property owners pay for the maintenance, which sounds like it would, what happens if there are not sufficient funds to cover the costs? So staff recommendation, 100% of property owners shall agree to the conversion. All costs of conversion shall be paid by the property owners. There's gonna be significant costs associated with converting. There's a lot of time associated with um, abandoning the right of way, reaching out to the utilities within the right of way to make sure that they understand and approve what's going on, that they get the uh, easements that they need to be able to maintain their facilities. All gates shall comply with emergency access requirements. All costs of maintenance shall be paid by the property owners. An organizational mechanism shall be set up to ensure monetary obligations and necessary work is being carried out. Formation of an HOA shall have 100% approval of the property owners and city shall retain ownership and maintenance of any water distribution and sewer collection lines within the neighborhood. So in terms of fiscal impact, if the gated community concept were approved and a neighborhood were to elect to convert to a gated community, the city would potentially no longer be responsible for maintenance activities within the neighborhood. And so the recommendation is to discuss the concept of gated neighborhoods and provide direction to staff. Basically the two representatives have talked to other property owners within the subdivision to see if there's interest. And the response has been is there might be, but they want to fully understand what the requirements would be from the city. And so the discussion tonight is meant to be applied more globally. If anyone were to come forward and request to convert their subdivision into a gated subdivision, but it would be, um, more specific to this neighborhood in the immediate future. Okay, thanks. Can you um, put up staff's recommendation? Maybe perhaps that will help guide the, there we go. Okay, um, staff's looking for direction from this council and uh, here we go. Thank you. Uh, I mean, looking at all your recommendations, I, I have no I have no, um, I'm supportive of what you're recommending based on um, if, if the community is interested in opening or establishing a gated community that all of those recommendations in my perspective seem reasonable um, and based on what Shannon said as well, you know, if it turns over to private property, then, you know, the taxpayers or community should not have to pay for the expense for the wish of having a gated community. That's my point of view. Thank you. Councilman Cardoza. I'm, I'm gonna approve staff's recommendation. Okay, Councilman Shaw. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, my concerns really are the a hierarchy level because you mentioned what is already there for the existing uh, gated communities and we need to make sure that it is consistent all the way through. Um, have we had other community or areas that have been interested in converting from public to a gated private community? This is the only subdivision, this the only neighborhood that's come forward um, that I can recollect in the, the times that I've been with the city. Um, we've had other subdivisions come forward at the very beginning when they're in, in the development phase, wanting to start out as a gated community. This is the first subdivision that I recollect requesting to convert. Okay, um, because with that, and I've said it many times, we need all housing. So we need everything from apartments and uh, zero clearance all the way up to gated communities. So I support the concept, but I would like to see more concrete numbers uh, gathered and presented. I would really like to see us have a workshop of all the property owners that would be affected so that they all have an opportunity to um, share their concerns and know what the the cost really is going to be because there's there's a lot of guesses in this and um and um i kind of go back and forth with do we know 100 percent of agreement or 90 percent of agreement because again back where we talked about republic earlier you know everybody's got rights and if we got 50 homes in there and one person doesn't want to why should 49 be held hostage over one? But at the same time, the one has just as many rights as the other. So it's a big problem uh, that we've got to work through. Uh, I would like to see us take what you've recommended, put some real numbers to it, 
and meet with those affected and the uh, people that have uh, brought this forward to us and have a workshop to really discuss it uh, fully so that we're all fully informed and fully engaged before we make any types of decisions because we're making we're making the precedents for other subdivisions that may decide this in the future. So we got to get it right. Okay. Excuse me, Mayor, or Vice Mayor. Go ahead. Um, this is different because the other subdivisions in the future are you, well, okay, you're right. Okay, I've got to, I'm thinking of new. Yeah. Okay, you're thinking just of the old ones. Okay. Well, they, with, but the state has the guidelines that these folks are going to have to abide by. So the main thing is they just need number figures is what they need. Is what, you're, is what you're asking for. You just want to know how much it's going to cost them to do this. Council member, that's part of it. Um, but, you know, it, that all needs to be conveyed because there's a lot of vagueness. What's the maintenance going to be? What's the cost of the conversion going to be? How is that going to be assessed through an HOA? Or is it going to be attached to property taxes? And I mean, there's, there's so many what ifs that can happen in this that I think we need to research all the numbers and have that workshop with them. That way we have a roadmap, just like we did with uh, the sewer attachments. We researched it, we brought it forward, and we've already had people connect to the city that was adjacent to the, um, the sewer lines, or excuse me, water lines. And uh, same type of concept here. Really take the time in this to vet it out and get the plan so if other subdivisions want to come forward, we've got the roadmap. Okay, my turn. Um, first and foremost, uh, I agree with most of staff's recommendations. Uh, my time with the city, I do recall other uh, areas wanting to gate, and uh, there were different reasons why that didn't happen. Um, some of those may have been fire access issues or emergency response issues. But I do agree with uh, Council, Councilman Shaw in regards to there may be others that if um, they were aware that that gated community option was available to them may want to weigh in on uh, on this and I, so I do agree I think if you're going to make one standard perhaps we need to just do a little bit of outreach to others who may be affected a hundred percent agree that once something does go gated the uh, the cost should be borne by those that are behind the gate and not uh, not necessarily borne by the rest of the taxpayers um, I do have a question and this was based upon a discussion you and and I had on this matter earlier, which was in this particular instance, there was a concern about the condition of the street. Um, and we talked about the possibility of the city bringing the street up to a certain standard and then handing off um, continued maintenance to the property owners. Is that is that still the plan with this um, particular item? We would, as part of the cost estimate, we could include that cost in there in terms of what it would cost to slurry seal the street to once it's turned over to them it's in a certain condition. To address the workshop, I need some additional clarification in terms of you know, what you're looking for because the cost of conversion, um, while that can be more general in nature, the actual cost for maintenance is going to be different for every single street. And so to manage your expectations and understanding of what you're looking for, I would like more clarification as to what you would like the workshop to specifically cover. Um, what I'm looking for is to make sure that the affected property owners understand exactly what they're getting into. So we should be able to come up with some type of formula or a spreadsheet that we can plug the streets and stuff in to figure out that this is what it's going to cost to do the conversion. This is what it's going to cost to uh, maintain this on an ongoing basis uh, as a good foundation. Now we realize it won't be absolute, but, you know, is it going to cost them $100,000 to gate it and bring everything up? Are we talking $20,000? That's two big different numbers there. Right, and but so you're talking specific to this subdivision, not general in nature. The workshop, I was referring specific to this, but it would be a process we would always use going forward. We would have the workshop for the affected um, community that wants to be gated, present them with numbers so that we know that they are accurate, the best numbers we have, uh, and all of the residents that are gonna be affected are fully informed of what they're facing. Right, one of the things that we won't control is the gate. Um, each neighborhood will have, you know, we don't know what their estimate will be for the gate, the mechanism, all of that. We can work with them to try to get that. We can do our best to put those numbers together. Um, we can try to get the property owners there. Doesn't mean that they'll show up and, um, in this situation, in terms of how that will be done, 
whether it's virtual or in person, uh, we will have to address that. Um, but then also managing this with other priorities of the department is something that we're going to have to evaluate. Uh, absolutely, and, and to your point, all we can do is make it available to the property owners if they choose not to, we can't make them, but at least give them the opportunity to be informed. I, I thank you. Through the vice mayor, um, that Councilman Shaw, you may, um, you made me think of some questions. You always do that so well to me. Thank you. Uh, I, I I could see the the concept of the workshop. Why both of you may be um, considering that for homeowners or or community members in areas, you know, development. But I think that goes into our develop, community development department where that could be a, a component that we offer in when future housing is being considered to be built or if there's a consideration for conversion or changing a section of our community because that goes back to the master plan and, and all those other areas. Um, I interpreted what you said in there and in our conversations prior to this, um, Diana, is that all those things mentioned are going to be covered in the conversations with the parties that are interested in perhaps um, just continuing the dialogue. So is that accurate to say that you were gonna cover those? So the, the two representatives of the neighborhood, their request was to understand what council will require. Okay. So they can take that back to the property owners within the subdivision to see if there's even interest to move forward. Right, okay. So based on your recommendations, that I, I guess one question comes up is how many homes are in that particular potential gated area? Yeah. Because that would let me know then if it is five community members or is it you know 10, how, how many are in that particular area? And um, how long would it take for the HOA formation to to happen, you know, and there's 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 a lot of um, timeline issues that um, partially as a council person, I'm not necessarily needing to be into the details of it, but knowing that you and our team are walking through every single of those recommendations with those representatives and those individuals in that community who are interested and possibly establishing this with all the necessary information, and that includes the fiscal impact. And so you've noted to us the fiscal impact for us as a city, because I asked you, it's like we don't know, because depending on what they want to pay and what we need to take care of and who ends up paying for what at the end. So your, your recommendations cover those areas in my uh, understanding with our conversations. So I'm not necessarily keen about a workshop. I think those things need to be covered first and then talk about a workshop, but that could be through our community's developments group, not necessarily through this. So, yes, sir. Additionally to that, those lending 
So if I, if I can speak uh, sort of on behalf of the council, I think we are interested in a community or a group of our neighborhood, if you will, that wants to gate, but the total burden of doing all this research and figuring everything it really needs to be with them. Because I could see, based upon what the city attorney said in our own questions here, uh, I like staff's recommendations. I think it needs to be transparent to those that are involved, what the time and the money and everything else is. I don't think that's a staff, a city staff obligation. So I, I, what, I, what I'm looking for us at here, at least, is yeah, we'd entertain the gated community concept, but the burden of figuring out all those things that, that you have uh, identified here and then some ne really needs to be borne by those who are uh, affected. I, I, I support what you're saying, Vice Mayor. I, I would definitely support that recommendation. Does that give you enough to go with? Yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, and to the Vice Mayor, uh, is there an opportunity for public comment on this item before we move to the next one? I thought I was going to get by without you having to uh, remind me about that, <laughs> but uh, I appreciate the fact that you did. Is there anybody from the public that would like to speak on this item? Seeing or hearing none, do we have anybody online that would like to speak? No one online. Okay. Thank you, City Attorney. All right. 